I always say that M&A is like a roller coaster, but with the way that interest rates are changing as of late, does that make you feel like you're on a roller coaster as well? Well, the good news about roller coasters is that they're often a pretty short ride. With interest rates and the economy changing as much and as frequently as it does, this is no roller coaster in terms of duration. This is something much longer, but the twists and turns, the ups and downs can feel just as severe as a roller coaster. Stay tuned as we dive into the topic of interest rates, the economy, and how business decisions are affected and changed due to this dynamic situation. My name is Nick McLean with Four Pillars Investors. We typically invest in boring businesses. These are the businesses that you walk by every day or products in your home that you use every day and you really don't think twice about. And we're good with that because we much prefer the boring situation than this crazy situation that we're facing with interest rates. As you think about interest rates, what impact do interest rates really have on the business landscape? First off, what I would say is that interest rates are not really a proxy for general macroeconomic conditions. We often hear comments from the Fed or whatnot that they're thinking about interest rates this way because of what the economy is doing. And really, they are linked. They're not entirely independent, but they're also not 100% correlated. For example, sometimes it feels like interest rates are driving changes to the economy. And sometimes it feels like the economy is driving changes to interest rates. That's part of the challenge in understanding this dynamic situation is because sometimes it feels like the tail is wagging the dog and the next day, might feel like the situation is reversed. This dynamism, this constant change is part of the challenge that affects business owners when trying to make decisions. One of the best scenarios for business owners, for the business world as a whole really, is stability. Even in periods where there are challenges to a business, to an industry, et cetera, if there is a level of stability Typically, the companies that are well-run and know how to respond to adversity will overcome. It's whenever there is a lack of stability on top of very challenging conditions that we are really in for some choppy waters. Let's talk about some different scenarios though. Let's talk about a scenario in which interest rates are high and also stable. Now, generally speaking, in my experience working with a lot of business owners is that most business owners are debt averse in general. Doesn't mean they're gonna have no debt on their books, but given the choice, they would prefer to pursue growth with internally generated cash flow as opposed to taking on debt. Now, in a high interest rate environment, even if it's stable, my position would be that most business owners are going to be even more averse to taking on debt in this scenario due to the increased incremental costs of debt. Now, that's compounded by the fact that in this day and age, a lot of business owners are approaching retirement age, and the last thing that they would wanna do is take on more debt shortly before retiring. But the impact of that cost is not just the actual cost that is going to have to come out of their company's cash flows, it's the perceived pain of paying that potential increased risk of insolvency that makes many business owners very averse and even more so in this current interest rate environment. As it relates to sponsor backed companies, so for example, a company that, that's owned by a private equity firm, what I think you will see is more diligence around growth initiatives. Additionally, what we have seen is that a lot more private equity firms are more willing to fund growth initiatives off of their own balance sheet instead of taking on more debt. And then if the interest rate environment changes or their views on the project just change, at that point they can take on debt. But again, they have that flexibility, they have that optionality. In the low stable situation, what I see is that a lot of business owners feel like irrational exuberance. You know, money feels almost free. Because of that, there is just so much lubrication within the economy that it takes a lot lower hurdle in order for projects to be pursued. Generally speaking, I'm good with that. I like growth projects as long as there is sufficient research, justification, I'm all for it. However, 
the challenge or where I start to push back is whenever the desire for that growth or the desire to pursue that project, it's irrational desire and it's not based off of the fundamentals. It's purely based off of the fact that it's so cheap to borrow money that you want to put that money to work because of the low cost of it. I don't think you should put money to work simply because there's a low cost to it. Find the projects, find the growth initiatives that you want to pursue, then think about how you're going to finance them. Don't finance a project and then find the project for which to use the money. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. You can make the case that high situations are bad, or you can make the, the case that the low situations are bad. Why do I say that? Well, high interest rates make projects more costly. Low interest rates, sometimes there is the perception that the economy is on the verge of slowing. As bad as either of those two scenarios might be, what's actually worse is whenever there's less certainty around where interest rates are going. In a rising interest rate environment, people are definitely going to sit on the sidelines in terms of pursuing new projects, making new acquisitions. The fear is that interest rates will continue to rise and keep rising, making it very difficult to find acquisitions or growth initiatives that will surpass their internal cost of capital. On the flip side, in a decreasing interest rate environment, sure, there's the benefit of having a lower cost of capital to pursue acquisitions and growth initiatives or whatever, but now you introduce this fear of if the Fed thinks we need to continue to lower interest rates, what are they seeing about the economy that I'm not? Are we headed for a recession? Are we headed for something worse? Both of those scenarios help lead to challenges that business owners face in deciding whether or not to pursue growth. And for that reason, I would much prefer a stable environment, even if it's high interest rates, to a scenario or environment in which you don't really have much insight into when the interest rates are going to stabilize. Well, that's how the general business landscape might change. What about the M&A landscape in particular? As mentioned, the worst scenario is a changing interest rate environment where there are mixed signals about whether interest rates are continue to rise or continue to fall. Just like the business landscape in general, a dynamic interest rate environment is not good. Stability is always best. As it relates to higher interest rate environments though, what I will say is that generally speaking, it's just going to increase the cost of acquisitions. It's gonna increase the cost for all borrowers. There's also going to be what I would call a bite to quality of sorts. Uh, not the typical flight to quality where you get out of equities and invest in gold, but it's going to be a more vigorous underwriting process as it relates to potential acquisitions. Lending will continue to take place. You know, banks out there, you know, part of their mandate is to lend money, but I think the underwriting process for them is going to be more challenging. I think fewer loans would get approved and the loans that do get approved, I think would have more onerous covenants. Compounding that is the debt service ratio is automatically going to be lower because of the increased borrowing costs. As it relates to buyers, I think that they are going to reevaluate the preferred capital structure in terms of the debt to equity ratio. Additionally, I think that more cash rich buyers are going to elect to fund the transaction purely off of their own balance sheet instead of funding the acquisition with third-party debt. But in terms of making sure that you can get a deal closed on your terms, I definitely think that the capital structure is going to be re-evaluated. And during that underwriting process, I think that there's going to be willingness to accept a lower ceiling if they feel like there is a higher floor. They're not going to look for hockey stick type growth, but they also want to be very sure that their customers are not going to walk away the day after close or whatever. At the end of the day though, financial sponsors, they still have to deploy capital. So they're either going to have to get comfortable with the risk or they're going to have to go to their investor base and say, we're sitting on the sidelines because in this environment, we don't feel the investment opportunities are attractive enough. I can't say that a lot of LPs and investors are going to like to hear that. Maybe it's the right message, maybe it's not. Maybe it just means that the private equity firm needs to be more effective at business development. Regardless, it will have an impact on how companies view acquisitions, 
how companies underwrite acquisitions and also how they think about potential growth initiatives post-close. On smaller deals, these are the deals with enterprise values of let's call it 5 million or less. These are typically going to be SBA back deals. SBA back deals are definitely a different sort of animal. Most of the loan officers for SBA lenders are really more like business development folks, which is not meant to be critical at all, just you know, assessing the situation. They're like a financial sponsor. They're trying to get as many loans placed as possible, albeit good loans, not just anyone out there. Definitely has to check all the boxes and, and go through their typical underwriting process. So as it relates to higher interest rates though, how does that really impact how many SBA deals are going to get done? Well. If you look at the numbers, it definitely has the impact to cause some deals to, to not get approved. There's absolutely the potential that due to debt service coverage ratio requirements, et cetera, et cetera, that some loans will not get approved. After all, the typical interest rate on a SBA loan is prime plus 2.75%. Prime right now is about 8.5%. So you're looking at a loan interest rate of 11.25%. That's not cheap money. So as you can see on my screen, we have a number of different periods here. What this corresponds to is the average prime rate over the last 12 months, which is 8.5% the average over the last 24, the last 60, and the 120. As you probably would not be surprised, it drops tremendously from a 12-month period to a 120-month period. Now let's look at a hypothetical SBA purchase. Cash flow, seller discretionary earnings, or EBITDA might be $500,000 in these four scenarios. Let's assume a 5X multiple, a down payment of 10%, with the financed amount being 90% of the purchase price or about $2.25 million. At the 12 month interest rate of 8.5% plus 2.75% or 11.25%, we're seeing a debt service coverage ratio of 1.33. That's EBITDA divided by annual debt service equals about 1.33. For the 24 month period, debt service coverage ratio goes up to 1.37. And at 60 months, 1.52, 120 months, 1.56. Now at first, it, it might be tough to say, is that really a big deal? Well, what I will tell you is yes. There are some banks that will look to have debt service coverage ratio of 1.5X or greater. Now some will go down to 1.3 or perhaps even 1.2, depending on how aggressively they are seeking deals. But I have definitely been in discussions with banks and they said that their internal number is 1.5 or higher. So for this hypothetical situation, you can see that uh, the higher interest rate environment is going to lead to some banks declining to do deals. Now, I mentioned it's a 5x multiple. Let's, what happens if we drop that multiple to 4.5x? Excuse me, 4.5. You can see that in this scenario, we're very close for the, the 12 month interest rate scenario. It's 1.48. I think a lot of companies would, or a lot of lenders would probably try to f find a way to, to round up. But even so, just look at the additional comfort that you would have in the, the lower rate scenario where debt service coverage ratio is almost 1.75x. That would definitely give banks a lot more comfort and my view is that many more loans are going to get approved if they're approaching that 1.75x mark as opposed to knocking on the door of 1.5. As it relates to lower interest rate environments, there's almost an exuberance about pursuing projects and pursuing acquisitions, even though the data might not suggest there needs to be as much exuberance as is felt. Additionally, for financial sponsors, a lot of times the target returns for equity is at least high teens, probably low 20s in terms of IRR. The driving factor is really whether or not you can grow the business, whether or not you can maintain margins, and ultimately pay off your debt. If you're able to do those things, even even in a low growth scenario, you're going to be able to hit your IRR targets. Look at this example. When looking at deals that are larger, let's say a company with EBITDA of $5 million, the calculations get a bit more complex. So I'm not going to walk through everything here. And if you look at this example in close detail, there are definitely going to be some errors or at least a few points that you wouldn't agree with. Regardless, let's just take a look at this simple example. It's a $5 million EBITDA business with EBITDA margins of 20%, 5X purchase price. We are going to fund 3X of that five in debt 
Cost of debt in the low interest rate scenario will be 5%. Principal payments of 20% of the outstanding principal balance per year. Tax rate of 30% with depreciation as a percentage of sales of 3%. Also, to be very conservative, we are keeping EBITDA and revenue the same throughout the analysis period. In the low interest rate environment, what you see is that the investment is still generating a positive net present value at an 18% hurdle rate. You can also look at the IRR, which is 21.6%. If you subscribe to the theory that NPV positive projects should be pursued, this is an example of a project that should be pursued. Now let's look at the high interest rate environment. Again, a lot of the same assumptions. However, the cost of debt is going from 5% to 8%. What you see is that you still have a net present value that's positive with the 18% hurdle rate. However, it's much smaller. Additionally, the IRR is 19.3% in the high interest rate environment as compared to the 21.6% in the low interest rate. Now, what should the takeaway here be? The takeaway should be, from my perspective, is that both of these projects should be pursued. Now, clearly 1.3, these numbers are in thousands, 1.3 million in net present value is greater than 500,000, much greater. But when you look at the IRRs, th those are still very attractive IRRs, especially in the context that no growth is achieved and there's a lot of other factors that we're discounting or, or leaving out. A big one is the terminal value. The terminal value that we have plugged in here is simply the same purchase price that, that we bought it for. I think it's natural to compare the MPVs for these, these projects. And you can see that the MPV of the low interest rate example is you know 1.73 times larger than the high interest rate. I get it, but I would encourage you to, again, look at this from a perspective of, is this an MPV positive project? If the answer is yes, then you should pursue it. Would it be great if you could get 5% debt? Yeah, absolutely. It'd be great if you could get 5% debt. The NPV would be that much higher, but we can't in this environment. And for that reason, we need to look at the, the company, look at the acquisition, look at the project in the context of what we can do right now. And under those constraints, we should still make this acquisition. To close, I think it's important to note that PE M&A activity is not perfectly correlated with interest rates. It's not perfectly correlated with the economy as a whole. As you look at these broad macro trends, you have pockets of economic activity that's actually going up. You have pockets where activity is going down. You also perhaps have lenders that are willing to be more aggressive or less aggressive. So even though there are these broad trends, I think it's important to note that there are always going to be outliers. And it's tough to say whether those outliers are going to be big outliers or small pools of outliers. Specifically, as it relates to private equity and M&A, when you look at the global trends, there are some monster, massive deals out there. And if those monster, massive deals don't take place, then of course, PE M&A activity is going to look like it's tanking. But just because some of the huge deals don't close or because there are billion dollar deals announced every week, that doesn't mean you can't get a fair or even a good price for your lower middle market business. I'm somewhat reluctant to talk about the trends that I'm seeing because I'm far insulated from the overall M&A private equity environment because I'm just talking to 5, 10, 15 different business owners and my worldview, if you will, is getting formed based off what I'm talking to with them. So perhaps there's a business owner in, in my backyard or you know a couple of states away that he's had five or six private equity firms talk to him about buying his business. Even if the macro trends are negative for private equity activity, how do you think that business owner is going to feel? I don't think he's going to feel like the M&A private equity world is in decline. I think he's going to feel like it's pretty healthy. And that's the point that I would urge you to walk away with is you can't always make your own destiny in terms of private equity activity and getting buyers interested in your business. If you have a good business that is performing that has a lot of growth prospects, I don't think you need to worry too much about those global trends. I think the savvy buyers are going to seek you out and to the extent you can put yourself in front of buyers, 
on your own, I think you're gonna have a successful outcome. Now, I would love it if one of those potential buyers you talk to would be you know, me at Four Pillars, but I realize that that might not always work out. Regardless though, you know, what is your take? As a business owner, what is your view on high interest rate environments? What is your view on low interest rate environments? And how do those compare to interest rate environments that are dynamic and you don't feel like you have any certainty about which way rates are going? Love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.